Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, it is that time of year again to everybody, so if you are an American, happy 4th of July to all of you out there who are watching, but even if you aren't an American, I still want you to, of course, enjoy the day. Either way, we of course put together our annual Just Guy deck themed to America. So without further ado, join me today in the timeless format for a super special edition of our deck techs with the deck that I am calling American Energy. It is 4th of July. <laughs> and uh, I need the energy if I'm gonna start blowing crap up. <laughs> That's what the founding fathers would want. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So as you can see, our American Energy deck is basically a Just Guy variant, which means it's going to have white, blue, and red. Or I guess I should say red, white, and blue. But you get the idea. Either way, we're looking at an average mana curve about 2.1. You're looking at 17 creatures, 16 instants, 4 artifacts, 4 enchantments, and 20 lands. The deck overall is trying to do one simple thing, and of course, besides celebrating America, we are basically a Jeskai energy mid-range deck that's trying to get a lot of value out of our energy, and we have the freedom, of course, to utilize it however we need to. But you may be asking yourself, how exactly are we gonna take advantage of all the energy we store up? What are we gonna be able to spend it on? Good question. Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's go ahead without further ado, jump into our creatures. Starting in the one drop slot, you will have Guide of Souls here. So let's talk about this card for just a moment. Moment here. Guide of Souls is a 1-2 human cleric for 1 white mana. ETBs, you'll gain 1 life and you get 1 energy. When you attack, you can pay 3 energy and when you do, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters and a flying counter on target attacking creature. That creature will become an angel in addition to its other types. Woo! This is a super awesome card for what it does. It allows you to basically stabilize as you keep casting more creatures and they enter the battlefield, plus that extra energy will become a really awesome payoff later on in the deck. The coolest part, however, of this card is, as you see, you actually don't need to even attack with the Guide of Souls to trigger its secondary abilities. That is awesome! Keep that in mind as you go through any part of the game itself. In the two drop slot, we have also Amped Raptor, we have Riddlegate Gargoyle, and Conduit Goblin. Each of these, of course, will all enter the battlefield with energy, but all of them have cool utility abilities. Amped Raptor, of course, is most likely the best in the deck, because as you can see right here, it has First Strike, it's a 2-1, and when it ETBs, you get 2 energy. Then, if you cast it from your hand, you can exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. From there, you can cast that card by paying an amount of energy equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. This can be really great for us as a tempo play to start getting a little bit more on the battlefield a little bit faster against our opponent here. In order to get a little bit more extra energy from our creatures, Riddlegate Gargoyle, only a single copy of, because realistically we don't need this ability all that often, but it's great to have it in a pinch when we need to. It's a flying gargoyle, it's a 2-2, it ETBs and gives us 3 energy, however we can pay 2 energy to give one of our target creatures we control lifelink until end of turn. And then finally, the other 2 drop we have is Conduit Goblin. So this Goblin Warrior is a 2-2, it ETBs with 2 energy, and at the beginning of combat on our turn you can pay 1 energy. If you do, another target creature you control will get plus one plus zero and gain haste. Ideally, you want to be able to hasten something that will help close out the game a little bit faster or at least accelerate the game plan to speed up the process, put a clock maybe on your opponent. In the three drop slot, you will have a blast from the past, Whirler Virtuoso, back from the original Kaladash set. When this card enters the battlefield, you'll get three energy. Plus, you can also pay three energy to create a Thopter token. This will, of course, help us go wide if we need to. You can actually make a really cool flying Air Force with this card. Actually, we already made a Thopter style Air Force deck from last year. 4th of July theme deck. You should all check that out if you haven't already done so. And then our only other card, and also because we are a budget deck, we can only afford one. It's going to be the one and only Flage Titan of Fire's Fury. Let's talk about this card for a second here. It's one of our greatest finishers. This is a legendary Elder Giant 6-6 that says, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifices unless it escaped. Whenever Flage enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals 3 damage to any target and you gain 3 life, similar to basically to a Lightning Helix. In order to escape it, you have to pay 2 red and 2 white and exile 5 other cards from your graveyard. This is basically going to be Croaxa or Uro, but in Boros colors. It really is an awesome card to have to finish off your opponent. Circling back over to the support pieces for your deck, you're mostly going to be looking at a bunch of ways to then take advantage of all the energy you have stored up. So, we will take advantage of that freedom, if you will, to then utilize cards
as like galvanic discharge here it's going to be your key removal for any of the enemy creatures or planeswalkers you want to target and then you also have to the narrative here helping you to draw a card and get some extra energy out of the deal you can pay off some of the extra energy then scale up your counter spell with ether spike here really really awesome and hilarious if your opponent is not prepared for it you'll have some extra card draw with cards like unstable amulet here and is a genitorium is a genitorium also will generate for you more extra energy by giving you an extra plus one energy regardless of however much you do gain you can then draw a card but you can only activate it if you've paid or lost four energy or more in a single turn Speaking of also ways, as I mentioned earlier, Unstable Amulet allows you to exile a single card. However, as we exile that card and then use that card later on, we can then ping our opponent for one extra damage. This also will trigger off with abilities like Amped Raptor with what it can do with energy as ETBs. Also, you have some extra lands, if you will, but they are going to be tapped. So you'll have Legion Leadership here, which on the instant side allows you to double a target creature's power and give it first strike to help them again maybe finish off your opponent. If you do need a little extra card draw and discard in a pinch, you have Rush of Inspiration here. Unless if you pay the two energy, you will have to discard a card at random. And then finally, in the four drop slot, mostly it's going to be for finishers for the deck. You'll have copies of Ether Revolt here. I absolutely love this card. So actually, let's talk about it for just a moment here. So... Ether Revolt is a 4 mana enchantment with the Revolt ability that simply says, as long as a permanent you control has left the battlefield this turn, if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent and opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus 2 instead. Whenever you get 1 or more energy, Ether Revolt will deal that much damage to any target. To be perfectly honest with you, we really don't worry too much about the Revolt ability on it, we care mostly about the secondary ability, allowing us to basically burn out our opponent every time we gain energy in our deck, which is actually really cool and a really nice way to kind of save up some of our extra removal and find other ways to just deal damage to our opponent. And then finally, not too often you're going to need this, but we did throw in one copy of Scurry of Gremlins here. When it ETBs, you basically create two 1-1 red gremlin creature tokens, then you get an amount of energy equal to the number of creatures we control. Finally, pay for energy, and creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and haste until end of turn. This is ideal with Whirler Virtuoso if you want to go super wide with your deck and just finish off your opponent with a flying air force to beat down your opponent and get your win. Something unique that I actually have decided to change this year is you haven't already noticed, previous years when I actually have done these deck types, we usually go all out with the budget because, hey, you know, America, capitalism, all that fancy jazz. But hey, we're in a bit of a recession and kind of a hard times right now on the economy. So I figured we're going to keep this budget, but I did find Find a clever way to take advantage of what we have. So what do I mean by all that? Well, when it comes to the land base, although it looks pretty simple, we do need ways of then casting things on time. So we'll have two plains, two islands, three mountains. We also will have some tap lands with idyllic beachfront, molten tributary, and sacred peaks. Also because we are an energy deck, we could take advantage of ether hub. However, the reason why we want these key lands specifically is I adjusted the budget just perfectly fine. So you can actually build this and take advantage of upgrading it very quickly with utilizing some fetch lands. We have arid mesa, Blood and Strand, and Scalding Torn. Hey, we are in the timeless format, so I figure why not we splurge a little bit and give all of you a nice jump start on maybe if you are interested in fetch lands and taking advantage of what they can do with what we have. Now, if you're the kind of player that wants to take this into best of three and you want to show off this deck even more, here's again what I'm going to recommend for you for the sideboard. So, if you need a little bit more removal, we have cards like Static Prison. When it ETBs, you can basically exile a non-land permanent. The card, of course, will tax you, however, because you'll need to pay an energy every single turn, and if you can't, then you will end up losing Static Prison. Keep that in mind again if you just need to put down something temporary, or if you want to hold something down for the long game. Speaking of extra removal, you also have copies of Harness Lightning here. It is a little more expensive than Galvanic discharge but it basically does the same thing then you'll also have for your removal in the graveyard you have Tormod's Crypt here you'll also have copies of Requisition Raid this also will give you the freedom if you will to then utilize it either to destroy an artifact and enchantment or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control and to finish off your opponent if you need a little bit more extra counter spell protection here we will also take advantage of Dovin's Veto to round out our protection for the deck now in terms of strategy and tips I can give you for the deck this is where again the deck really shines and takes advantage of its theme you can be basically as liberal or as conservative as you like with your strategy. And what do I mean by that? Well, as you kind of can see from the gameplay footage, depending on what your opponent is throwing at you, you can really hold off all of your energy and utilize it when you feel it's absolutely necessary to just go all out with it. Maybe make a couple of Guide of Soul pumps and just go out with a big bang. Or you can go super liberal, as I just mentioned. Maybe you have your World of Virtuoso out and you can go super wide, making a Thopter army to just overwhelm your opponent and go super wide, finishing off with a scurry 
of gremlins. However, everything else in between really just comes down to managing the energy for the deck. So this is again where one of those cool things about this deck is allowing you to have the flexibility of either drawing cards when you need to, maybe you need to put down the tap land. You really do have a lot of options with this. And remember that that flage is a great way to finish off your opponent if your opponent is just removing everything. Having said that, of course, just like America, we're not perfect. And of course, the major weakness to our deck is because this is a budget deck, it does feel quite slow at times, even though you do have fetch lands to kind of help speed up the process because you can get out on the end steps of your opponent some of those tap lands it's still going to hurt a little bit because remember that in order to make this deck function very well, you ideally want to make sure that you can stay on curve and make those counter plays when you need to with ether spikes or just ramping out stuff with amped raptor. But if your opponent is able to block down your strategy and prevent you from utilizing your energy, you get a bunch of energy that sometimes you just don't end up using. Or say maybe you do manage to get a bunch of cards into the yard. If your opponent can exile that flage you have, you really don't have much of an extra backup game plan. Even if you get the ether revolt out, remember that again if your opponent can protect themselves or they can just keep gaining life again the deck will struggle but don't fret because even so this is a hilariously fun deck which does really give you the option of choosing how you want to get your win however you manage to man it however you manage to handle that energy you are given also, you'll want to take a note that the fact that in terms of upgrades for the deck, you actually don't need to do all that much. You could probably squeeze in one more extra copy of Flage just to give yourself a little extra wiggle room. But honestly, the deck actually functions quite well as is. And if you see, you'll be surprised at how well it can do. So if I would recommend any upgrades for you, if maybe you want to be a full on capitalist, if you will, and budgets no object or matter to you, then I would definitely say just upgrade the mana base, get in all the shock lands, because that's remember what you're going to be able to take advantage of with the fetch lands that you currently have. Throw in maybe a couple of triomes and you're basically good to go however you want to build this. Now having said that, if you do want to take advantage of all the energy you have, if maybe you want to look at a different variant of energy out there, of course as always I will leave up on screen right now a couple of other older variants that may be a little bit outdated at this point but they still provide a solid backbone for you if you do want to try it maybe in another format or maybe even another color. I'll of course leave those links of course in the description below. But otherwise, with all that said, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give you. Obviously, as you can see today, we had a lot of fun with this deck, and thankfully, with the fact that we have a lot more supportive energy in the color of white, we were definitely able to stay on flavor, and of course, had a really cool deck that you can take advantage of. Even if it's not, of course, Independence Day, or even if you're not an American, you're still going to have fun with this deck if you are interested. So, to put it another way, if you are a fan of energy decks, if you are a fan of mid-range piles, and if you're a fan of doing some micro managing with that energy to take advantage of a variety of strategies all built into one deck, then I would definitely say give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to then pull off some wins against your opponent, you'll be very surprised at how well the deck does. You'll be very impressed also with the flexibility and freedom it definitely has. And I assure you, whether you play this on the 4th of July or any other day of the year, American or not, you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later.